Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. The time has finally come for us to be able to talk about Superlink. So a lot of people have been waiting for the Superlink to come out, but don't get too excited just yet. The full Superlink family isn't out as of yet of this video. We're gonna be talking about two different things in this, the Superlink Siren and the environmental sensor. You're also gonna need a Superlink gateway. So in this video, what I'm gonna do, we're first gonna show off the gear and then I'm gonna get the Superlink Siren installed in my wall as it does need an ethernet run to it for PoE. Then we're gonna test out how loud the Siren is and look at it within Unify Protect. So let's get started. And the first thing that we're gonna start with is the environmental sensor and you could just see how small this is. I will put the dimensions somewhere on screen. There are a few things to mention about the environmental. It's this nice white color with the Ubiquiti branding. In the middle, we could see that little dot and that is for our ambient light sensor. Beside it, there are these two metal prongs and that is for our leak detection or our water sensors. And looking at the back, we also have four more and then we have the reset button and a QR code. Not visible here is our status LED as well as our signal LED, which will be showing up there once this device is turned on. The little black sensor at the bottom is our temperature and our humidity sensor. And then on the bottom, we have this 3.5 millimeter aux jack, and this is for our water leak probe. So if I take that out, we would be able to attach a probe it doesn't come with this kit, but I think that's something that they'll add in the future. Now, originally when you get this, you're gonna see a little piece of plastic that you need to pull, and that's gonna make sure that the battery turns on. I've already been testing this out, that's why you don't see it, but we can take this cap off. There's another cap underneath, and I would assume that's so that it keeps the battery dry if there was ever water. And on the inside, we have a CR123A battery. Within the box, we also have our mounting gear. So there's this one where if you peel this off, it would be a sticky pad and we have our screw holes and they give us some screws and anchors as well as this little template with a level on it. What is also nice about this sensor, it has a magnet built into it. So if you're just sticking this on maybe a magnetic door, you can. So you could see that it's hanging onto the magnet there. Next up is our siren and this looks just as nice as the environmental sensor. And this is really nice, it's that white color and then we have the LED status light. So once the siren goes off, this will end up turning red. And the siren itself is 110 dB and it is super loud, I have been testing with it. I'll put the dimensions down on screen, but this does have a weather proof of IP56 and there is a status light on it. The back of this may look a little bit different to you, but I think it's really great how they did it. It makes it really easy for us to get our cabling into this unit. We could pull up on the cable gland and then we could plug in and then we could push it back down to route our cable through here. We do have a cable cap on the bottom as well. Also on the back, we have a reset button, but we also have this tamper switch. So this tamper switch is gonna push into our wall, and if anybody tries to remove it, the siren's gonna go off. On the bottom, there's also a security T8 anti-drop screw. Within the box, we have a bunch of different mounting. This is what I'm gonna be using to put on my drywall, but I think this one is used for your drop ceiling. They also come with a level or a template for you, and we have a bunch of different screws, and they give us this T8 screwdriver. We're gonna wanna make sure that we put this on for our weatherproofing. Mine's gonna be inside, but we still wanna keep dust out of the RJ45. Before I go and physically install the siren, I'm gonna get it adopted into the Unify Protect application. For ease of use, you could do this from your phone application. I'm gonna click to adopt. We're gonna click adopt again. And if we go over and we look at my online devices, we could see that I have the USL environment already adopted into here. This is connected to my Superlink gateway, which is two stories below where I am right now. Okay, the first thing that I'm gonna need to do, we need to cable this in. So the siren needs to have like a Cat 5E, Cat 6, Cat 6A, whatever. It just needs ethernet going to it. I do have this hole in my wall and it hasn't been covered for quite some time. I ran PoE to my doorbell, my Ubiquiti doorbell, as well as this chime up top. So I do have a glow rod in here right now and I have a cable attached to it in the basement. We're gonna end up putting the siren right beside the door chime or the Ubiquiti door chime. So let's pull this cable up. <clears throat> okay, and this was just indoor cable because this is only going indoor. We didn't need any outdoor rating. I'm just gonna pull enough to get up there. We're gonna end up taking that chime off and cutting a hole beside so that we could put the siren. I'm gonna take out the doorbell chime so that I could attach a string to the cable pull the cable down and then pull both of the cables up. So the new cable that's gonna be going to the siren.
I'm going to mark the hole for the mount with a sharpie and then we're going to cut it out with the drywall saw. With the hole now cut out, I'm going to fish the new wire for the siren to that hole and then we're going to begin mounting. The grommet was put on the cable and then I plugged in the cable to the siren and this is how the cable routing is going to look. After the cable's routed, all we need to do is grab the siren and put it on top of the mount. Okay, we could see that the siren is now in place. We got to do some testing. You'll be able to see also on my phone what I'm doing. I'm going to click on the siren and then we're going to go to settings. From settings, by default, it's on 50%. I'm going to turn it right down to 10% and we're going to test this and it should be pretty loud and you'll be able to see the red light going off. Now the test lasts about five seconds, so let's bump that up and we'll go up to 50%. That's really, really loud as you can hear. And now we're gonna do 100%, which is probably gonna kill my ears, but here we go. And that is extremely loud. It is actually ear piercing. I'm going to put it down to 10% and we're going to create an alarm. So when I open my front door, that alarm goes off. Within Unify Protect, I created an alarm. So what this alarm will do when I open up my front door, it will let the siren go off. I have one of the older UP Sense on the front door and it is attached to the siren and it will go for five seconds. But let's open the door and see if it works. And as you can see, the alarm is going off, or as you could hear, it's going off, and that will last for five seconds and then shut back off. So anytime that my front door is open, that alarm is going to go off. Hopefully in the future, we could have it set to some sort of schedule, or we have a keypad where we could arm and disarm. I listened back to the playback, and the siren didn't really sound too different between 10, 50, and 100, so the mic didn't pick it up quite correctly. So you're going to have to trust me. At 50%, it was already ear piercing. At 100%, I barely could even handle it. So this is a very loud siren, and hopefully you guys get to test it when you get one. But now we're back at our Unify Protect dashboard, and let's kind of take a look at what the settings are of these devices. So we have over here, we have our siren, our UP Siren PoE. Clicking on it, we could see that we have our status, our connection, the model, the device firmware, the MAC address, IP address, and the uptime. And we also have our different notifications. So we have siren when front door is opened. And that was last triggered 27 minutes ago. Clicking on the settings wheel, there's a couple things that we could do. We could change the name, we could select tags, and we could turn the status light off. Here we could also set our volume for our max volume. So I have it set to 10% because I could pretty much hear that throughout my house. We could also test the siren or we could remove it from our application. Let's now take a look at the settings of our environmental sensor. We could see the status and the DBM, which is minus 71 DBM, and we could also see the battery life. This is connected to my Superlink gateway. Clicking on it, we could see a couple things here. We could see that there was no leaks detected. We have our light levels, we have our humidity, and then we have our temperature. We could also go under sensor management, which we'll take a look at shortly. Scrolling down below, we have all of our status connection and model, same with firmware and our battery levels, and then we have our different alarm triggers. We'd also look at the different statistics for this. So we have our temperature, humidity, light, and then we have our leak. And going over to the settings, we could name this whatever we'd like. We could pair it to a camera if we'd like, and then we have our events to capture. So I'm capturing every single event. So temperature, humidity, we're doing light, we're doing leak, which is built in, and then we're also doing leak external. We could also add the safe zones. I'm just gonna leave it at default for now. And then we have our update frequency. So you could have it updating every 30 seconds all the way up to an hour. If you have multiple Superlink gateways, you could select which one to pair it to and you could also lock it to it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the sensor manager. So within the sensor manager, we could look at an individual sensor or we could take a look at them all. Right now, I really just care about the new one, so the environmental. And it's showing us our different temperature ranges. It is in this office right now and it gets pretty hot. So you can see it got up all the way to 27.6 Celsius. You'd also switch the graph to show humidity or we could do different light. I'm going to go over to alarm manager and I'm going to create a new alarm and I'll call it leak detected. There probably already is one by default, but I'm just going to show you how we create different alarms. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over to our sensor. 
And from our sensor, we're gonna select water leak and I'm gonna select the USL environmental. What we're gonna to wanna to do for this, we're gonna want it to notify. And this, I'm gonna have it notify Cody McCallum and we're gonna create the alarm. I have the sensor upstairs and I have a cup of water. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drip a little bit of water onto the sensor and see if we get a notification from Unify Protect. So I'm gonna grab some water and here we go. Okay, and there you go. You might not be able to see this too well, but it does say water leak detected. And if you look at the right hand screen, it says that it's currently leaking and it's showing us the time. And that worked pretty quickly. And that's gonna be it for my video on the initial super link gear. So we had the siren and we also had the environmental. I think this is gonna be a great system when we have everything coming out. I'm really looking forward to a keypad where we could arm and disarm and have a bunch of different motion contacts or motion sensors to trigger if an intruder is trying to get in. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.